and welcome to another episode of Boring History. My name is Angela and today we're going to be looking at the wonderful mystery that is Gebekli Tepe. Now hopefully you've already seen some images of the site, if not I highly recommend go and google some, then come back. Now the other thing, because Gebekli Tepe is one of those sites that has about 5 billion different theories around it, anything from Aliens 3 to Atlantis, I just want to point out that by no means am I an expert, so Feel free, have your own opinion, do your own research, that's all good. I have got a whole heap of references down below, so if you want to do your own reading, the information is there. Um, I might even include a pie chart, just to make it look more professional. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. So, Gebekli Tepe, what is it? Well, essentially we go from this ice age to this giant structure that just appears out of nowhere. The site is located in the southeast of Turkey, spans across 9 hectares, and the oldest layer, layer 3, has been dated to the 10th millennium BC. Now it's also this layer which gives us distinctive T-shaped limestone pillars that are representative of the monumental architecture that we find throughout the site. During the Neolithic period, for reasons unknown, bones and other artefacts and just a whole heap of dirt and crap were dumped onto the site, effectively cloaking it from the world until the mid-1990s when it was rediscovered. This leaves us with a lot of questions. For example, was the site used for ritual or was it just some type of giant village? I'm going to skip straight to the spoilers and say most likely it was a ritualistic site, which then leads to the question, were these hunting rituals or were they funeral rites? Again, well, let's skip to it, and most likely they were both. Today I'm going to be focusing on the funeral rite side of things, just because that's what I find interesting. For starters, there are a lot of animal depictions scattered throughout the site, with the most common of these being snakes, making up 28.4% of all animals represented. Now, considering that the next closest runner-up is foxes, coming in at 16.8%, that's quite a significant representation. Snakes are quite often representative of chthonic deities, ergo the underworld, so it could appear as though we have some type of thing happening here. Another example of possible funeral rites would be the images of vultures that we find scattered throughout the site. Now these images of vultures are also found at this nearby site that begins with a C, if you can pronounce that, bonus points to you. Now at this site the vulture imagery is almost definitely related to funeral rites, if not sky burials. So given the proximity of the two sites, at least in an archaeological sense, it's not unreasonable to think that perhaps the imagery at Gebekli Tepe may also be related to funeral rites. Regarding human remains, they found both pieces of human bone and pieces of modified skull in the backfilling material used at Gebekli Tepe. What's interesting here is that in 2010, the archaeologist who discovered the site, Klaus Schmidt, commented that although the analysis of these bones hadn't been finalised, it was most likely that the results were going to show some type of special treatment of the human dead rather than say something such as cannibalism. And just as he predicted, in 2017, when the results were finally published, they gave us two most likely outcomes. One, that the bones were either in relation to some type of ancestor worship, or the display of defeated enemies. These cut marks found on the bones has led to the suggestion that Gebekli Tepe may have been home to an undocumented type of skull cult. Now, given the rather loose definition of a skull cult, this is rather hard to argue against. What we can perhaps conclude is that if Gebekli Tepe was indeed home to a type of skull cult, it appears more likely that this may have been in relation to some type of ancestor veneration as opposed to the display of defeated enemies. Now, it's also been proposed that images of snarling predators that we find scattered around the place may also be indicative of some type of human sacrifice. However, if hunting rituals were also performed at the site, then it is possible that these snarling images may be thus related. Or, if we look at these images in relation to, say, something like those from Tibet relating to sky burials, we can see that even though images may sometimes appear aggressive, the ritual behind them isn't always necessarily so. We should also remember that other human bones have been found in addition to the skull fragments, which suggests that whole bodies were also buried around here. So to date, there is no archaeological evidence which supports the theory of human sacrifice at Gebekli Tepe, and the human remains that have been found align with those found at other pre-pottery Neolithic sites. It's also important to remember that the origin of the backfill in which most of the bones were found hasn't been confirmed, and it's likely that it was collected from the surrounding plateau. 
Therefore, whilst we can't rule out the intentional inclusion of these bone fragments, it's also possible that maybe they just had absolutely nothing to do with the imagery found there. Maybe. And there we have it, a very brief overview of Gebekli Tepe. What's our conclusion? Well, I guess in order to understand the treatment of the human physical remains, it's imperative that we understand the beliefs that prompted their treatment. Until we understand these beliefs, everything else is just speculation. Thanks so much for joining me, and I look forward to sharing even more boring history with you in the future. Yeah.